there's been quite a few updates to the current channel in Excel this last month or so. So I'm just going to do a two-part video. The first one's going to focus on pivot by and group by, and the second one will be talking about Python very briefly. Okay, let's go. So let's start with group by. Um, it does sort of what it says. You can group data. Let's say I want to group the um, colors here. Okay. And I want to analyze the units. I'm just doing control space bar after clicking in the column, just the way I do it these days quicker. And what do I want to do? And here's this thing called an eta lambda, which is essentially like a shorthand, like a simplified, I don't know why they call it eta lambda. There's some etymology there, sort of about simplifying functions. Um, but yeah, that thing, rather than writing a long lambda, just do sum, press enter, beautiful, okay? You notice that the, um, the total is at the bottom. You can edit that. So again, you've got more optional things at the end here. You can say, do you have headers included in the range you selected? I didn't, but if you did, you could show them or hide them. Um, the next one, I love this one, grand totals at the top, okay, so minus one, lovely, okay. So that way, if you have something new, okay, you go here, add an orange, it automatically gets bigger, okay, but the total's always at the top, so you could reference that cell potentially, which is pretty cool. Okay, and then, We've got sort order, so you can actually pick a column number. So if I wanted to sort alphabetically, um, this is the first column, so I could sort by that one. And now it's going alphabetically in descending order. I'm guessing I could do a minus one to reverse the sort order. Yep, there we go. Okay, but the total always stays at the top, which is great. Okay, filter array, so you could say, right, I only want to include where the uplift equals Yes, and now we've only got green and reds because that's the only one with Y's against them. That's pretty funky. And then there's another parameter at the end, which I do not know what that does. The documentation doesn't tell you what it does. Um, so if I find out, I will find out eventually, I'll update the description and let other folks know. Or in the comments, somebody will know what this does. Let us know what that does. But I think without demoing it, the description of it's awful. Okay, right, so that's group by. You can also do cool stuff with text, which you can't do, you know, with pivot tables and things, or you can with concatenate X and some crazy DAX. I've done a video on that. Um, but if you do group by, let's say we're doing to do color again, but this time we want to give all a list of all the products that are that color. Okay, you can't do a sum. You could do potentially array to text or concat, okay? But it doesn't look very good, does it? You know, that's that's not useful. So what you can do is actually write, rather than one of these shortened lambdas, which is what these essentially are, you can write a longhand lambda. Okay, so I wanna pass in the parameter, the product name, so X is just a placeholder for that. It'll just put that table product data in there. Um, and then I want to text join, okay, using space, a comma, space, comma, default it to a true. The list of text will be the unique uh, X's, okay, close the bracket on the unique, close the bracket on the text join, close the bracket on the lambda, and we're done. Okay, so there's a bike that's black. There's a skateboard and a scooter that's blue, and so on. Pretty cool. You can add the option to turn off the total rows if you wanted to. I like it. That's very funky. Okay, pivot by. You can do some cool stuff like this. Check this out. That's one formula. Okay, summarizing that table by year and by month. Okay, let's replicate that. Let me show you how that works. So here we go. Um, equals pivot by. Same as group by, but you can do rows and columns. So the rows are going to be the text. I'm just going to use the text function because there's no month or year here. There's just date. So text that, comma, and then double quotes, uh, mm-mmm. So that's 
short month, long month, okay, comma, and I'm just going to highlight this little bit again, okay, and then control V, and this time it's going to just be uh, years, Y, 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 Y. All right, so that's the text bit, comma, and then the values, let's do the rate and the function, let's do the max this time, just to be different. Close the bracket. I've added that formatting in already, okay? And you can see January's bold, but what I actually wanted to do was put in um, comma, comma, minus one to put my grand totals at the top. Pretty cool. The reason I did the formatting of mm-mmm is so that the months sort properly. Otherwise, if you format it without the leading numbers, they just go in alphabetical order, which is not what you want. Okay, but that's pretty cool. And these things, these eta lambda functions. So let's say I did a, a sum ifs. Okay, let's, so let's just delete this. Equals sum ifs. This sort of gets outdone a little bit because, um, or the need for it is removed a little bit because of the new group by when you're doing some ifs and stuff. So I'm just going to sum the units, okay, where the color is one of these colors and where the product is one of these colors. Oh, sorry, product is one of those products. Press enter. There we go. But how do you do a sum that's dynamic? Well, I can go up here, equals by col, and I always get it the wrong way around, so column by column. Here's the array. See, there's L15 hash, comma, and then up pop your eta lambdas, your simplified sort of aggregations. Sum, close the bracket, and now that spills automatically as well. So if there were new items added in this list or in this list, that formula would potentially get bigger. It's pretty cool. Okay, last little one, checkboxes, because they're quite cool. You can just insert checkboxes now, insert checkbox. And all they do is put a true and a false. They're really like conditional formatting. So you can click on one, you can tick it, you can press space bar to toggle it on and off. If it's ticked and you press delete, Okay, it turns it off, you press delete another time, it deletes the box. Okay, so if you have a whole bunch highlighted, control space, oh, sorry, if you have a whole bunch highlighted, let me try that one more time, space bar ticks them all. If you've got, press delete, it gets rid of one of them. Okay, highlight them all, press delete. Because there was one with a tick in, okay, let me just go and tick one of them and highlight. Because there was one with a tick in, when you press delete, it gets rid of that. Whereas when there's nothing with a tick in and you press delete, they're gone. All right. But they return true, false under the hood. So you can actually say, you know, equals, and that returns a false, and then as soon as you tick it. So you can do if statements and stuff like this that run off those. All right, check out part two about Python. I'm going to right click on here. I'll show you how to do this. Look at that, talking about the distribution, pretty cool. Or some sentiment analysis with positive feedback and negative feedback. All right, click the button, watch part two.